simple, commonsensical legislation to allow workers and nurses to freely form unions and to be part of this great new union, NNU. And you all are preparing yourselves to make unionism available to nurses across America. I don't have to tell you that you will have to fight huge national health care corporations. Some of corporate America's most notorious and greedy anti-worker and anti-union chains. And to be effective, you need a national organizing team that can move to opportunities and answer the call of nurses who need help to form a union. A national organizing team to give you the flexibility to leverage these corporations and give their nurses the best chance to win. And you owe it to the nurses to give them the best chances to win. You're forming a truly national union and American nurses and workers need you to act like a national union with a truly national organizing team. That's how you build power. And we need you to have more power. We need you to have more power. Not the Friss, not Tenet, not HCA, not Beverly Enterprises. We need you to have more power. This is an incredibly important moment in American history. Thank you for bring, building your national union to do what has to be done. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. We can lift America out of this recession by passing the Employee Free Choice Act and allowing nurses and workers to organize and bargain with the corporations for a greater share, a fairer share of the wealth that we all create. To generate the buying power and consumer demand America needs to get out of the hole that corporate America put our nation in. My brothers and sisters, we've had this fight before and we won it before. See, before 1935 in America, there was a very small middle class. And if you worked for a living, you worked in poverty. The middle class was made up of large landholders and small business people. And everybody else who worked lived in poverty. But in 1935, we were the first country in the history of the world under Franklin Roosevelt to codify the right to form unions and bargain collectively. And in the next 20 years, 12 million workers went out across America, primarily America's heartland and industrial heartland, and they formed unions. And they built the modern American labor movement. And they built the modern American middle class. And they built something we now call the American dream. And we became the first country in the history of the world where if you worked by the strength of your back, your brains, the sweat of your brow, or the hardness of your hand, you could aspire to raise your kids in the dignity of the middle class. That's what this fight is about today, brothers and sisters. Because we have lost that. And if you don't lead the fight with your unity to change that, will be the first generation in the history of our country to leave our kids and grandkids less than what was left to us. I'm going to finish with another little quick personal story. I'm from West Tennessee in southeast Missouri. On my mama's side, we're Scotch-Irish, we're American Indian, and we're African American. You can see it in my face. <laughs> On my daddy's side, you can see it in my face. You can see these eyes from Sierra Leone and these lips from Sierra Leone and the baldness from Scotland. <laughs> and on my father's side, we're American Indian and Scots-Irish. My father's mother was a daughter of a sharecropper and tenant farmer. She never owned anything. They never owned anything but the clothes on their back and one extra change. They ate from the utensils of whatever shack and whatever plantation they were working on, chopping cotton and picking cotton. They slept in the beds of whatever shack they were living in. And when she got almost grown, because she didn't wait till you got grown then, she married my grandfather, Bill Acuff, an American Indian laborer. And he never had nothing. 
And together they never had nothing and they were living in the boot hill of Missouri, that part of Missouri that sticks down into Arkansas trying to make a living off the land. But after World War II, they and their family found out about these union jobs in St. Louis, 150 miles away. You would have thought it was a planet away, Walt. And they got all their cousins and they moved to St. Louis and their cousins went to work for Brown Shoe, a union shop. My grandfather went for, to work at American Can Corporation and became a steel worker. My grandmother went to work at Woolworths on Grand Avenue and became a member of the retail clerks, now the UFCW. And because of the union, they raised my family from dirt poverty into the middle class. And because of the union, I have everything that I have today. Were it not for those unions, my brothers and sisters, I'd be scrambling and scuffling in southeast Missouri and West Tennessee trying to make a living off the land, a living that can't be made anymore. Now here's the real challenge. That exit ramp from poverty that my grandmother and grandfather were able to take, that exit ramp from poverty that they were able to avail themselves of, that exit ramp's been cut, it's been closed for millions of American workers in similar conditions. Brothers and sisters, my charge to you today is let's open that exit ramp back up. We need you in in you. We need your vision. We need your wisdom. We need your militancy. We need your strength. We need your power. And most of all, we need your unity. Thank you. God bless you so much. Love you to death. Thank you. You make my heart. Thank you. It's up to y'all. It's up to y'all. It's up to y'all. We need you, NNU. God bless the NNU. We need you, brothers and sisters. Is that all right?